you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, regardless of your credit experience in real estate investing or your income, don't go anywhere because we're getting ready to plug you into it in just a moment. So welcome to the show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if you're a first time listener or viewer, a special welcome to you. Uh, we're really starting to get some traction from the show now. And so we want to uh, welcome you to being able to come here on the show. So if you've never uh, seen or heard the show before, we talk about primarily investing with uh, on single family houses and commercial as well. And we have all kinds of expert guests on here that have proven themselves to be very, very successful real estate investors. And today I've got a very, very special guest with me on the show. But before I bring him on, I want to remind everyone that coming up not far away is that we've got uh, my upcoming live event, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. And at the conference, uh, we're going to have private lenders for you to network with. We got the bus tour where we uh, actually look at our houses and we, uh, I teach you how I found the houses before other real estate investors even knew they existed. And so to learn about the live event and how you can come for less than $100 to this $3,000 event, just get right on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. So with that, let's bring on my special guest and also my very dear friend, Chaffee Wynn. Welcome to the show, Chaffee. Hello, Jay. <laughs> How are you doing today, man? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And, you know, for those of you that have been uh, following uh, the show, either on YouTube or on iTunes, um, when we kicked off the show, Chaffee was uh, on the show with me for quite a few episodes. Um, but if you've never met Chaffee before, just an overview of Chaffee is, hey, look, for those of you that are watching or listening and you know you are a left brain, thinker brain, no worries. There's hope. There is hope. Chaffee is a thinker brain by nature. He's an engineer. Uh, in fact, when he started uh, working, um, you know, out in his career, uh, that's what his training is in. He's got a degree in engineer. Uh, he was in the corporate world for 10 years, worked for a Fortune 500 company in the IT all right, department. But then in 2003, he started his, his uh, real estate investing career, did his first real estate deal in 2003. But then here's the reason why we got Chappie on the show today. In 2006, that far back, Chaffee started coaching uh, business owners, and he is an expert, and he's known for his coaching in the arena of mindset and having the right mindset, no matter what business you're in. As it, you know, it could be real estate investing, or if you're viewing or watching, and you know you, you're not into real estate investing yet, this is still going to apply to you, no matter what you've got going on. And so, you know, in um, shortly thereafter, in 2008. He went full time into being a coach and a mentor for business owners uh, with strategies and also focusing on mindset. So Chaffee, um, you know, I don't know anybody that knows Chaffee Wynn better than you do. Any other background that you think people may find interesting or how they could connect with you as far as relate to you is what I mean. Well, I don't know if they can relate to this, although, you know, uh, you know, part of my background is if you're actually watching this podcast versus listening. I know I don't sound like it, and I am a refugee. I am Asian. <laughs> so if you're listening, you might not be able to tell. Only if you're watching, you can see that. And uh, so I am a refugee. And so I started, you know, my family came over with nothing except for the clothes on our backs. And my mom had her purse. And that was it. That's all we had, just family and clothes. And we didn't speak the language. We didn't know anybody. And, uh, and so, you know... This is uh, my background. My story is one that if you came from nothing or if you're struggling or you're, you're having some challenges, that's where I grew up. That's you know, how I, I grew up and, and uh, experienced life uh, in, in my early years. And so I know that this, this country is so full of opportunity that anybody can make it. 
regardless of where you're at, regardless of what ethnicity, what religion, what uh, what you were born at, where you're born, you can make it in this country. And so, um, you know, coming from me to you out there, it's that, you know, this has so much opportunity and listening and working with somebody like Jay is going to help you get there so much faster. And yet you got to take advantage of the opportunities that are available to you. Yeah. So what was it that caused you or what triggered you to decide to get the engineering degree uh, in college? Well, there were two reasons. Um, those two reasons to get an engineering degree in college were uh, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what is it that your dad and mother said to you uh, as to why you should get an engineering degree? So as, as uh, most uh, uh, traditional families grow up, it, it's basically, you know, I had two choices growing up. Uh, and the mantra was always go to school, get good grades and get a good job. And the reason was that, as I said, my family, my father um, came over to the United States. He had a wife and four kids to support. He didn't have an education. And so he got a manual job or a job on an assembly line of Ford Motor Company. And it was manual labor, hard work, blue collar work. It was good, honest work, and it was hard work. And so when I was growing up, he didn't want me working manual labor. He wanted me to go to school, get good grades, and you know, either become an engineer or a doctor. Those are my two choices. And right. I didn't want to become either. And I said, which one is the less schooling, right? <laughs> and that was engineering. <laughs> right. So I became an engineer. <laughs> okay. So so really, this this was really all driven by your parents' desire, because they, I mean, and then that was that was their mindset, if you will, as to how life financially could be better for you than it had been for them. Correct, and and you know it was one of those things that the the families that supported us, the families that helped us when we arrived to this country, they were either engineers or doctors. Uh, my father working on the assembly line saw these, you know, young 20-something engineers bossing everybody around and making twice as much money as him. And right. So too, you know, if you're an engineer, you're a doctor, you made money. And everything else, you, you didn't know about. And so, um, you know, even though that's not what I wanted to be growing up, I know why he wanted me to, to do that. You know, he was just looking out for my best interest, not realizing that, you know, when you're not passionate about something, when you don't have uh, an energy about something, it's a struggle. It's a challenge. Sure. Yeah. I've been there. I get yeah. that. And my best guess is most of our viewers and listeners uh, watching or listening to the show right now can relate to at least some time in their, I mean, unfortunately, the majority of people right now, in fact, I came across the percentage recently and I forget what it is. I know it was over 70%, maybe it was over 80%. I think it's been 70 80% that people, if they had a choice, would be doing something else and absolutely do not like what they're doing for a career. So you did your, you started studying real estate investing. You did your first real estate deal in 2003. What got you interested in real estate investing and how'd you get started? Well, you know, it was um, one of those things that, again, I came from very little. I grew up on food stamps, grew up on, you know, government programs. And, and so I knew that there were there was a lot more out there. You know, my friends in the community that we lived in, we lived in a predominantly Caucasian neighborhood and uh, middle to upper class neighborhood. And so my friends had a lot more than I did. You know, I lived in an apartment complex growing up and and I always knew that there was more. And growing up very at a very young age, I realized that most successful people um, had two things. They either had real estate in their ownings uh, portfolio as assets, or they had stocks and bonds. And so when I grew up, I told myself when I grew up, I want to either be a real estate broker or a stock broker, because that's all I knew. I didn't know this thing right. about real estate investing, right? Right. So I wanted real estate and stocks and bonds because that's where I knew wealth was just like my father. All he knew was doctors and engineers. That's kind of all I knew was real estate and, and stocks. And so, right. um, I, you know, I, I, I was looking at both at the same time, although real estate, as I grew older, I realized that, you know, there was a huge opportunity in the real estate industry. Uh, it's not going away. Right. And people always need a place to live. And so yeah. I actually gravitated towards real estate. 
And when I took the first course that I took in real estate, it, you know, it was a, a love at first sight. <laughs> I got you. So what kind of, uh, and, and, and I want to encourage everybody to hang on here uh, right on to the show because we're going to be getting to the mindset portion of this very, very quickly. But before we get there, uh, you know, so this is quite a few years, uh, you know, that you've been doing the real estate investing. In fact, you and I have been doing it practically the same length of time now. Um, what kind of real estate deals have you done, you know, over these past years? I mean, uh, you done any wholesaling, you know, retail, flipping, uh, single family, commercial? What, what's, what's your experience so, like? So as an engineer, and some of you technical people out there can relate to this, is that I had to know everything, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to know how to do everything. Uh, and, and so, you know, I took courses on everything, wholesaling, short sailing, assignments, rehab, you name it, I took the course on it. Uh, and I spent a lot of money and a lot of time learning a lot of things that I probably didn't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now that said, the difference between what I did and what I think a lot of unsuccessful people do was that I actually implemented a lot of what I learned. And so for me, it was not just about learning how to do something, it was implementing it, testing it, doing it, re, you know, learning from it. And so I've done rehabs, I've done wholesales, I've done assignments, I've done short sales, uh, I've then moved on to uh, working with individuals to develop triplexes. I've bought raw land, uh, we entitled land, uh, we flipped land. Um, we were working on a whole community development in New Mexico uh, in 2007, 2008 timeframe. And unfortunately, you know what happened during that time frame. So. Boy, do I know what happened. I yeah. mean, shoot, that, that's when I learned all about private money was during that time. Yeah, that was a uh, 650 acre development, uh, multi-million dollar development master plan community we had it all laid out all ready to go uh, we had some financing in place and we were working on everything and then everything blew up so that was an experience so i would say <laughs> yeah exactly so you know you started you started coaching um business owners and individuals back in 2006 you've been full-time since 2008 yeah. uh, working with business owners and new real estate investors and, and etc so what, uh, what got you interested in, in, in the mindset piece of uh, how important that is for people to be successful? Yeah, you know, what, what got me interested was, was working with the right coaches. And what I'll say is that when you work with the right coach and you learn certain things, every single time that I hired the right coach or a, a good coach, right, my business doubled. And I would hire a coach, I would learn something, and then my business would double, or it would move twice as fast. And so, you know, the first uh, first deal I did was a rehab deal. That was my very first re re real estate deal. I did not have a coach. And guess what happened? <laughs> uh, the results were good. <laughs> right. It was I, a significant loss, coming. shall we say. <laughs> I've um, heard that that's, coming. That's what we call the school of hard knocks. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and so shortly thereafter, I hired a coach and uh, made money. <laughs> so every single time that I started learning from a coach, either about real estate business or any more importantly, about how to think about deals, how to think about the business in a certain way, it allowed me to execute faster, execute more forceful, forcefully, strongly, um, and also really just move my business forward a lot faster which got me to the point of, well, I know how to do all these strategies and techniques. What was it that made me double and move faster, double my business and move faster? And it really boiled down to, you know, the, the things behind, between the two ears, as we say, right? Yeah. And when I thought about things the right way when I started learning about myself, my strengths, my skills, and the strengths and skills of other people and how to relate to them. That's when things really started to move. And so that's yeah. really what I was started getting to know people, understanding myself and understanding other people. Um, I, I fell in love with that piece of it, that mindset piece, the, the personal development piece. Right. Well, yeah, I've got a friend named Tim. Uh, his quote is until you own the real estate between your ears, you can never successfully own real estate out there. So, um, so Chavi, here's what I'm wondering. Um, 
what would you say uh, what would you say is the main thing or things uh, for lack of a better word that ho- that that keeps people from being successful or really keeps entrepreneurs or someone that wants to be an entrepreneur from really uh, reaching or coming close to their maximum potential? Well, that's a whole three day boot camp. <laughs> I know. Maybe we should put maybe we should put one on like that sometime. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there there are a lot of a lot of uh, factors that go into making people unsuccessful. Um, the, I would say the biggest one though is just not taking enough action. Right. Nothing happens without action. You can go, like I said, I went through all this training. I spent all thousands and thousands of dollars. And if I didn't take action, I wouldn't be where I was today. Um, yeah. And so the, the students that uh, I work with, you know, I work with them and the ones that don't succeed, and there are some that do not succeed. And the reason is because they don't take action. They don't implement what we agree upon them taking action on. So mm-hmm. we'll do goals. We'll do uh, timelines. We'll do tasks. We'll put them all in place. And for some reason, the following week, you know, they haven't completed their tasks. And so we work on that. And most of the reasons why they haven't completed their tasks is because they weren't thinking about things the right way. And so they let other things get in the way and they may come up with these things we call excuses. And so mm-hmm. we have to overcome those excuses. We have to overcome those challenges. And when we're able to do that and they start taking the actions we agree upon on a weekly, monthly basis, then they get results. Yeah. So it's, it boils down to taking action and obviously, if you're not taking action, then there's a whole bunch of reasons why you're not taking action. Right. So, de- so define for our viewers and listeners, what is, a, what is an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset? And then the second part of that question is, if someone has a scarcity mindset, have you have you worked with people in the past that actually are able to change their mindset? Absolutely. Um, that and that's a very powerful question, Jay. And um, so let's let's just dive into it real quick. Um, a scarcity mindset is when you think that there's not enough of anything or of the thing that you want, and so you uh, how do you say it? you try and you're afraid of certain things. You're afraid of doing things because you're afraid of losing money, right? Because you think that there's not enough money out there or that you don't deserve that money or that there's not enough money out there for you, right? Um, And so you're not taking actions. You're not making offers. You're not making deals. You're afraid of certain things. And so you're afraid of a lack of resources that you don't have enough. So you're afraid that you don't know enough you're afraid of many different things because of a lack of something, either resources, finances, uh, uh, education, coaching, support, whatever it is that you think that you lack. That's what we call a scarcity mindset, right? There's there's scarcity out there. Mm-hmm. So you're not taking the actions because of that. Now, an abundance mindset is the opposite, which is we live in an, a world of abundance. We live in opportunity is all around us. Abundance is all around us. There's so much money out there. And we know that because in the past 10 years, you know, we've gone from a $10 trillion deficit to a $21 trillion, $22 trillion deficit. There's $12 trillion extra money in the world in the past 10 years. Where did all that money come from? <laughs> right. right. Um, in the in the seventies, uh, there was a fear of a shortage of oil, and so we had I remember. Gas lines <laughs> way the out the long gas lines. Right. And and so what you realize with an abundance mindset is that we have enough energy to last us because when we run out of one resource, our innovative minds, our human uh, imagination and innovation will create ways of utilizing that energy more effectively, more efficiently, or we'll come up with different resources that will be better, as good or better than the one that uh, we're, we're short on. And so with abundance, you know that there's a lot out there. And so you're not afraid to go out there and do things because you know that abundance will come to you when you take certain actions. So can, so if someone 
Of course, sometimes people don't even know or are not self-aware that they have a scarcity mindset. Correct. My guess would be most people that have an abundance mindset know they have an abundance mindset, but those that have the scarcity may just not realize what the problem is. You know, you and I have had many discussions uh, sometimes uh, thinking about individuals that we say, you know, you just got to, what does it mean, Chavi, when we say you just got to get out of your own way? What does that mean? <laughs> So what, one of the, my favorite quotes uh, from uh, one of my friends and mentors, uh, his name is Les Brown, <laughs> <World -renowned laughs> speaker. Gotta love Les. Yeah. And uh, Les says that uh, you can't see the picture, if, if you can't see the picture if you're inside the frame, right? Right. And so that's what a lot of people are. They're inside their little picture and they don't know what's going on outside of the picture or around them because they're stuck inside of it, right? And so having somebody on the outside looking at the bigger picture of what's going on and telling them which way to go and what to do is, is key to overcoming some of those fears, some of that scarcity mindset. Um, you don't know what you don't know. And so right. working with the right people, surrounding yourself with a power team, a mastermind that's going to help you uh, point to different things that you're not aware of that's how you start recognizing some of the strengths and weaknesses that you have and then start working to overcome those. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about uh, an, uh, a particular couple right now. And just so all of our viewers and listeners know, I run a mastermind group for real estate investors and Chaffee actually uh, participates and assists me in running that mastermind group. We've been doing it now for, I don't know, two and a half years or something mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, we get together every, you know, every 90 or 120 days in person. But I'm thinking of a particular couple, and I'm not going to call any names here on the show, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of this couple as having any kind of scarcity mindset, but there was this fear of letting go of their day jobs when they had already proven themselves as real estate investors. So I think they had somewhat, not generally speaking, but they had a scarcity mindset of, okay, and is this really going to be able to work and happen? And of course, in the mastermind group, you were an integral, a very important part of helping them see and get past letting go of the day job and letting them, you know, rise to the next level by being full-time real estate investors. Um, you know, what do you remember about that scenario and, and how, sure. and how you were able to help them get past that? Well, I basically had to take a hammer and whack them on the head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, that's putting it uh, nicely, I guess. <laughs> no. Um, so no, the, and here's the challenge with a lot of people is that uh, when you are comfortable in a certain position or level or job, it's difficult to let go of that level of comfort and start exploring what's out there and the opportunities that are that are available. In other words, fault. In other words, false security. Because right. some people are saying, "Oh, I'm so secure in this job," when in fact that job could be gone tomorrow, right? Right. Yeah, and you got to understand too. You know, an abundance mindset is that there's so much wealth. There's so much, and wealth doesn't mean just money, by the way, right? Wealth is wealth of time, wealth of energy, wealth of friendship, wealth of family, uh, wealth of many things. And and so there's so much wealth out there. That, you know, when you're stuck in a position and you think that, hey, I got a comfortable life, right? I'm, I'm making a decent income. I'm above median, maybe. Um, maybe you're even making up over $100,000 a year, which is actually a decent pay for a lot of people. Then you start thinking about and realizing of, well, what could I achieve? What could I do? What, what could I uh, get more of life? Because there's so much out there and life's too short to not to that right and you know so what you just when, said go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say you know if you're if you're making let's just say 50 or 100 thousand dollars why couldn't you make five or ten million dollars right and the answer is you could except you're just not allowing yourself to do so because you're afraid of letting go of that comfort level you have a scarcity somewhat of a scarcity mindset and you don't believe in that abundance yet right yeah <clears throat> one thing you just said <clears throat> One thing you just said was, you know, what if? And when someone is saying what if, then now that now now I don't want I don't want 
the viewers or listeners to think that we should not think through a scenario or think through, you know, I don't know who said it first, when you're looking at making a decision to take an action, of course, you want to prepare for and what's the worst that could happen, be prepared for what's the worst that could happen. But of course, you're going to expect the best. And so I was visiting with, um, I was visiting with a student not long ago. And on during the conversation, they kept saying to me, and I shared this with you, Chavi, what if this happens? Or what if this happens? Or what if this happens? And I, when they finally ran out of gas, or I had to interrupt them, uh, you know, I, what I, I said, stop thinking what if. Stop thinking what if. You've already what if this scenario to death. I want you to start asking what's next. Right. What's next? Absolutely. Because, and then you and I've talked about this many times, you know, the power of asking ourselves the right questions, right? You know, the best questions, I mean, a bad question begins with why, as in, mm-hmm. why did this happen to me? But excellent questions we ask ourselves and our coaches and mentors and advisors is, how can I do X? So, Chappie, uh, I mean, you know, for years and years and years, you know, you've been, you've been coaching business owners now and entrepreneurs. So how about identify for us in the time we have remaining? What are some of those characteristics, personal habits, traits, et cetera, that, um, that helps the entrepreneur be successful? So again, there's so many different things. Um, and to focus on a few, I think one of the most important things, and you've heard this before, Jay, you've, you've probably taught this before, which is understanding your why, right? And more than understanding your why is that having a burning desire and a passion to achieve that why. And, and so if you don't know what your why is, you can't really have a desire or passion to achieve the why because you don't know what it is, right? <laughs> and yeah. so, well, and, and flesh that out for a little bit. Give that a little bit of color. What does that mean to know what my why is? So when you were born and placed on this earth and you were growing up as a child, what did you want to be when you were a child? And why has that changed? And so everybody was put on this earth for a reason. and it's not just to work a nine to five for your entire life and then retire and hope you can travel the world before you get sick and die. Right. I mean, right. It's, it's to do something. It's to accomplish something for you personally um, and for the ones that you care about. And so understanding what that reason, why you're put on this earth, why you are here um, and, and why, you know, it, what drives you, what motivates you, that's what's key. And so understanding that piece of, of what's my why, what's my raison d'etre, right? As, as the French say, reason to be. Um, yeah. yeah. That out, flushing that out. That's that's key. Yeah. And if I can just add this quickly, um, I, I frame my why in the uh, from the perspective of serving. So mm-hmm. So, and I think you would agree, and one way to answer or to ask the question is, what is it that I'm passionate? You said a burning desire. What is it that I can be passionate about in order to serve in a way that serves others and makes a difference in their lives? Would you agree right. with that? Absolutely. And so, for example, uh, real estate investing, right? When you're a real estate investor, when you buy a property, you're looking for a motivated seller. And so when you buy that property for them, you're helping relieving them from a burden that they're motivated to get rid of. When you're selling that property, you fix it up, you make it pretty, you sell it to somebody. You are selling somebody their dream of owning a home. So you're helping that person there too. In the process of fixing that property, you're working with contractors, you're working with mortgage uh, people, private lenders, whatever it is that you're working with. Uh, and you're putting together a team and you're helping all those individuals achieve, uh, 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 you know, their uh, their business, their life. And so you're helping support them. And so as a real estate investor, if you're passionate about real estate investing, you realize that you are serving multiple groups of people and helping elevate those individuals as well as the community as you work on building and, and rehabbing the community. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Now. I will, uh, one thing uh, I will add to that, Jay, is that real estate investing doesn't have to be your passion. So it is not the passion for a lot of real estate investors. 
What I will say though, is that real estate investing is a powerful and strong stepping stone to help you achieve whatever that final passion is. And so Absolutely. I used real estate investing. I used real estate to buy and sell properties and I, enjoy, I, I love doing it. I enjoy doing it and I'm passionate about coaching. And so real estate investing allowed me to start a coaching business in the worst economic recession that we had, right? Um, in a long time. Right. And that, was, and that was because of what I learned and using real estate investing allowed me to then build that business up. And that's what I'm passionate about, which is coaching. Yeah. And so I still invest in real estate because it still generates income and helps me support and grow other things. Right. So... I already know something now that I didn't know when we started the show a, a, a little while ago, and that is we're going to need to do a part two of this <laughs> interview because you have got just a wealth of information, Chappie, and, um, and you know, strategies and, 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 you know, the way to think about things to be successful. So we've only, ident I only had time so far to identify the burning desire, okay? Mm -hmm. You talked about taking uh, massive action. We talked about abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset, and the mindset can be changed. Um, we've got time in this show to just touch on one more uh, characteristic or what have you of the um, of what it is that that is a successful mindset. And then just on the next show, we're going to pick up where we left off right here, Chappie. Because I know you got a, you got just a wealth uh, more information uh, about what this successful mindset looks like. But let's talk about one more. I mean, do you have, for example, do you have a, do you have a, a, um, do you have a, uh, a habit, or do you have something that you find yourself doing that helps keep you in the right mindset and the right outlook and perspective? Well, again, you know, my, my biggest driver is always my why. So that's like my North Star. So anytime I'm doing something that's not guiding me towards my North Star, then I readjust. Okay? And so, you know, one of my mentors always said, uh, there's, there's certain questions that you should always ask yourself. And one of some of those questions are, are you, the thing that you're working on, is that the highest and best use of your time? Right. Excellent question. <laughs> right. Is that the highest? So if it's not the highest and best use of your time, why are you doing it? Okay. Um, the other thing is what's going to get you, what's going to make you the most money and get you the closest to your goal in the shortest amount of time. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could be working on a big, huge project that's going to get you to your goal. Only it's going to get you there 30 years down the road. Right. And so is that something you should be working on right now? If you have to put food on your table. <laughs> Right. So it's going to generate the greatest amount of income in the shortest period of time that's going to enable you to then focus on more longer term pictures, longer term goals. Right. Um, so those are some of the questions that I constantly ask is, is, is what I'm doing right now the highest and best use of my time? And is it going to make me the most amount of income in the shortest period of time so that I can then focus on the longer term goals? That's excellent. So everybody, we're going to have in the show notes uh, these uh, these points, bullet points that Chavi's gone over so far. And so Chavi, on the next show, I hope you are available to be my guest because I want us to do part two. This is only part one. So this is part two of the successful entrepreneur's uh, mindset. So um, Chavi, thank you for uh, joining me here on the show today. And I look forward to part two on the next show. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, be sure and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on any future shows. Uh, you can put comments below. You can put questions. We'll get your uh, questions answered on real estate investing. And of course, uh, if you're listening on um, iTunes, then uh, be sure and subscribe and rate and review. We appreciate your feedback. So with that, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and we'll see you on the next show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. Bye for now.